Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Too Deep. At the very least, once a year, an ominous and even perceived menace of a date pops its threatening, sinister head up on our Gregorian calendar. It's none other than Friday the 13th. And today is that day, Friday the 13th. Where and when did this date turn so spooky and so threatening? If you search Friday the 13th, the majority of results will claim it all started with the arrest and eradication of the Knights Templars on Friday the 13th of October, 1307. Here's a few instances of bad things that happened on Friday the 13th. In October of 1307, Friday the 13th, King Philip IV of France arrested hundreds of Knights Templars and later had them executed. September, Friday the 13th, 1940, Germans bombed Buckingham Palace. March, Friday the 13th, 1964, Kitty Genovis was murdered in Queens, New York. In October, Friday the 13th, 1972, a Chilean Air Force plane disappeared in the Andes. September, Friday the 13th, 1996, Tupac Shakar was shot and killed in Las Vegas, Nevada. Friday, January 13th, 2012, the Costa Concordia cruise ship crashed off the course of Italy. But I believe it goes back much farther than 1307 when the head of the Knights Templar placed a curse on the Catholic Church, which we're gonna save for another time. But the dread, I believe can be traced back at least to the time of Queen Esther, Mordecai's younger cousin. In the first chapter of the book of Esther, King Asuerus gave a huge seven-day banquet for all the people in Susa. Great and small, they were all invited. They were singing, there's no party like King Asuerus' party because King Asuerus' party don't stop. There were couches of gold and couches of silver and marble pillars and even a mother of pearl and other precious stones displayed everywhere, showing off the wealth of the king. The royal wine flowed without limit. Everyone was invited to drink as much as he wanted. On the last day of the party, when the king's heart was merry, he called for Queen Vashti to come before him and his nobles so that he could show off her beauty because she was a beautiful woman. But she refused to come. This infuriated the king. So he called an emergency meeting to seek advice from his royal advisors, who advised him, banish Queen Vashti from your presence, O king. Chapter 2 records a search for a replacement for the banished queen, with Esther, Mordecai's cousin, being chosen to replace her. Chapter 3 of the book of Esther finds Haman being promoted and everyone bowing down before him to pay him homage. All that is, except for Mordecai. Haman is furious about the insolent Mordecai, and finding out that he is a Jew, he decides that he's not only going to kill Mordecai, he's going to kill his whole Jewish race. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Haman devises a plan to eradicate the whole of the Jews who lived in the whole province of Persia and Media. Let's pick it up there. Esther chapter 3 verse 7 through 11. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, is the twelfth year of King Asuerus, they cast per, that is, they cast lots, before him and day after day, and they cast it month after month until the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. Then Haman said to King Asuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom. Their laws are different from those of every other people, and they do not keep the king's laws, so that it is not to the king's profit to tolerate them. If it please the king, let it be decreed that they be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who have charge of the king's business, and they may put it into the king's treasuries. So the king took his signet ring from his hand, gave it to Haman the Agagite, the son of Hamadatha, and the enemy of the Jews. And the king said to Haman, 
The money is given to you. The people also do with them as seems good to you. Verse 7 says that from the first month, the month of Nisan, to the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, they cast lots every day before him in a full year. Why? Well, trying to see the right time to go into the king to present his devious plan. It took him twelve months to be favored by the lot because the lot did not fall favorably until that 12th month. Then he went in to see the king. Again, why? Why did it fall in that particular month? Well, I believe verse 12 and verse 13 will give us a clear clue. Esther chapter three, verse 12. Then the king's scribes were summoned on the 13th day of the first month, and an edict according to all that Haman commanded was written to the king's satraps and to the governors over all the provinces and to the officials of all the peoples, to every province its own script and every people in its own language. It was written in the name of King Asuserus and sealed with the king's signet ring. The very next month, the month of Nisan, which is the first month of the Jewish year, was Friday the 13th. The king's scribe formally officialized Haman's plan on Friday the 13th. Now look at verse 13. Letters were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces with instruction to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate all Jews, young and old, women and children, in one day. The thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, and to plunder their goods. And you know what? Hamas has issued a decree just like that for an uprising on the Jews on today, Friday the 13th. But anyway, as fate would have it, the 12th month also had a Friday the 13th in it as well. All the Jews were to be killed on Friday the 13th of Adar, which is the 12th month. Just as we get most of our things from either the Jews or Christianity, like the weekend, Christmas, Easter, we get the Jewish feast and other things like that. So it's the same thing with this fear of the 13th. We get it from the Jews because of all those things that happened to them on Friday the 13th. Let me sum all of this up for you. The fear of Friday the 13th goes back at least four to 500 years before Christ to the time Haman's plot to eradicate the whole of the Jews. The plan was officially authorized on Friday the 13th of Nisan, and it was to be carried out on Friday the 13th of Adar. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing to our channel, and would you hit the like button and share this video. It would help us greatly so that we can make more interesting videos like this one. Please join us next time for Friday the 13th, The Curse, Part 2. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kenny Yates, and this was too deep. Be blessed and stay blessed.